there is a big male orangutan just walking out right now. He is massive. Just up in this tree. Ooh. Pit Viper. This river is home to big saltwater crocodile. He went swimming in the water. A croc about five meters long grabbed him. So just down this hole right here is a big tarantula. They are venomous and if I got bitten out here they do have very big fangs. Against all odds this big male had ten females up in the tree with him. This is what I wanted coming over here to Borneo to have this one-on-one -on -one connection with an animal as beautiful as an orangutan right here. Over the past few episodes we've been exploring the wildlands of Borneo looking for the deadliest creatures in the world and mate we found them I'm gonna to attempt to pick it up at the moment and a snake big enough to take down an elephant with the amount of venom that it carries in its venom glands but that's not the main reason we came to this beautiful country this episode is gonna be pretty crazy so we're currently on a boat at the moment heading deep into the jungle of Borneo. Now the reason why we've come out here is because these are truly wild lands which hold so many crazy species. Elephants, rhinos, leopards, saltwater crocodiles and the main reason why we've come out to this area of the forest is to film the human of the forest orangutans. We actually share 97% of the same DNA as these creatures. But the sad thing is these animals really do need our help because it's estimated that in the past 80 years about 80% of the orangutan population has disappeared from these forests. We're about to jump on a speedboat, head up the river to a little sanctuary which holds these orangutans. But yeah, we're gonna be living with them over the next few days, filming some crazy adventures here in Borneo. And hopefully this whole experience will make one or two people wanna save these animals. Welcome to Borneo, let's get this adventure started. So this is the boat that we're gonna be staying on for the next few days, living off this boat, going out there into the jungle and seeing these orangutans. We've spent the last 24 hours or so traveling to get out here. I'm super tired, but super excited. So this is where we're staying, just right up on the deck. Malaria is a real thing out here and can be caught if you get bitten by the wrong mosquito. Last night when we were sleeping here, there was an orangutan just up in the bushes over there, which is pretty crazy. And I reckon on the boat right up here, we might be able to spot a few up in the trees before we even get there. And these are my brothers that are going to be taking me on this adventure, Diaz and Hari. We were in Australia yesterday morning, now we're in the jungle of Borneo. What other species could we find out here in the jungle of Borneo? So we have saltwater crocodile, orangutan, and some endemic monkey that we call it proboscis monkey. With the big nose. With the big nose. King cobra. Oh yeah, king, king cobra. cobra. And then, So we actually have nine primates in this national park, but in total I think we have ten primates. And if anyone's looking to come on an adventure in Borneo, I'll chuck their Instagram up on the screen but yeah check them out if you ever want to come over here and do exactly what's happening in this video all right let's go find some orangutans yeah <laughs> Borneo is an ecosystem that is filled with so many different animals so many crazy unique species that only live here they're endemic to this area that's the reason why I wanted to come here but Hope you enjoy this adventure. We're about to jump in the speedboat, get out of here, and find some orangutans. Let's go. Yeah, so this is one of the first orangutans that we've seen just cruising up this river bank. Yeah. Now we're gonna be getting up close and personal with these animals over the next few days. But seeing them just cruising up this river to that spot in the rainforest is so cool. So we're just walking through the jungle right now and we're looking for animals. This area in particular holds a lot of big orangutans so we're going to be keeping our eyes out for them but also a lot of venomous snakes as well. We're being careful, we're barefoot at the moment trekking through this jungle. Pretty crazy adventure, pretty crazy way to start off this adventure. Let's see what we can find. So just above me right here is the first orangutan that we've actually found on foot walking through this jungle. Now this jungle is filled with so many animals. Sun bears, leopards, 
orangutans, but this is the animal that we came out here to find and they are so cool. They're literally the people of the forest. And he's just sitting up in the tree right there, looking down at me. She didn't look very impressed. But I wanted to show this orangutan that I would much rather be living out here with them than back in the city. So after spotting a highly venomous snake way up in the canopy a few trees away from her, I knew it'd be the perfect opportunity to test out my climbing skills. So you can see, just up in this tree, big pit viper. So cool, big fella. Got a nice blue color on him. I feel like an orangutan up here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come back down. <laughs> yes. There we go. He's much crazier than me. Good job. <laughs> Two. So these orangutans are actually incredibly intelligent creatures and what they'll do every single night. On the boat ride here, I was looking up into the canopy and I saw a bunch of leaves all pushed together, made into a bit of a nest. Every single night, these orangutans will build these nests up there in the canopy, snapping a bunch of sticks off, sleeping on them, and then going on after that. And if it's raining, they'll even build little roofs over the top of them. There is a big male orangutan just walking out right now. This is what I wanted to see. He is massive. What's his name? Roger? Roger. Roger. See those massive cheek pads that he's got? They're a very plate-faced animal. The more bananas that this guy eats today, the bigger they're gonna get. And this big male is probably about 35 years old, living out here in the wild, and he's the dominant male. If another one wants to come into this area and eat all of those bananas and take all of his females, he's gonna have to fight Roger for it. And it's my time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't come back, I'm gonna be living out here, living like a kid. Now, Roger would be so much stronger than me. And they're very intelligent creatures too. They've even been seen using sticks and rocks as tools out here in the rainforest. Sowing, sowing the wood and also paddling on the boat so the orangutans do all that, that saw yeah. and paddle on the boat yeah paddle. <laughs> they mimic. and also walking on the ground like like with, with two feet yeah they what? copy us yeah copy us That's they it. can definitely speak as well they just don't want to pay taxes but yeah this is a pretty crazy experience seeing these animals in person we're gonna watch roger for a bit and the other orangutans that are feeding in this area and yeah just see these beautiful animals up close we'll change the lens and get some really good shots of them So the sun's just going down at the moment and what we're going to do after dark is head back to that place where we were filming the orangutans earlier today and go for a night walk to try and track down some snakes. It's been such an epic first day in Borneo, seeing these orangutans and now going out for a night walk. We might even get in a little canoe and see if we can find some crocodiles and gharials later on tonight. Pretty cool though, just enjoying the sunset and I'll see you all after dark. So it's just got dark here in the jungle of Borneo. What we're doing is walking around, walking some tracks with the locals to see if we can find some venomous creatures. The main goal for this night walk is to find a big tarantula that we can hopefully catch, get up close to the camera, but there's also heaps of venomous snakes out here. Hold it. 
Why are you biting me, buddy? <laughs> so just down this hole right here is a big tarantula. We're hoping that he comes back out at the moment. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. So this is a big tarantula out here in the rainforest. And he's a beautiful one as well. This is so cool. This is one of the species that we wanted to find on this night walk. They are venomous. And if I got bitten out here, they do have very big fangs, but it would most likely feel like a bee sting if I was stung and didn't have a really bad reaction to the venom. But take a look at that. Out here in the jungle of Borneo, and we found this really big tarantula. So this is a black Borneo tarantula. And as you saw, the method of us catching him was putting a little stick at the front of their burrow and they'll actually come out and attack. So what they're doing is they're sitting at the front of their burrow at night, waiting for something to go past, like a little bug, a little lizard, anything like that. Strike out, envenomate it, drag it back down into the hole and eat it. But that's pretty cool right there if you ask me. We're on this night walk looking for snakes. Been a pretty epic day and night so far. I reckon we're gonna let this little tarantula go and keep going. So, we're just gonna let him go. Come down low, I guess. Okay, close, close to you. There oh, he goes. There go, yeah. Back yeah, down in there. So it's day two at the moment. We're just heading to the second place where we're gonna be looking for orangutans. There's a few big males that live in this area that we're hopefully gonna be able to get on camera. But yeah, beautiful day out here in Borneo. Let's see what we can find. So we're just walking into one of the parks at the moment. And we've got a little orangutan right here. Beautiful little male by the looks of things just laying down on this boardwalk. Doesn't have a bad life laying down here in the shade. Okay. Thank you, boss. Thank you too, boss. There we go. So we're heading out to the feeding station now. We've got a backpack full of bananas that we're gonna feed to these orangutans. Only the rangers are allowed to feed them. Yeah, it'll be cool to see some big orangutans, big male ones eating them. Is it heavy? So we're just calling them in at the moment. At feeding time every day, they'll do these calls and the orangutans will hear them and hopefully follow me up this track. Hopefully I can run fast enough with this backpack on. During fruiting season, they won't actually feed these orangutans as much fruit. But when there aren't as many fruits out there, they will feed them more. But the idea is to get these orangutans back out there, fully out into the wild. And what they're seeing in places like this is less and less orangutans are coming to these feeding zones, which is a good thing because they've done surveys outside these areas and there are still the orangutans out there. They're just choosing to live a life fully out there in the wild. So we're nearly at the feeding station at the moment. Pretty cool. Watch some big orangutans eat all these bananas. So we just carried those bananas over and we're at the feeding station. We're seeing the first few orangutans gathering at this area. Now this is a good thing, bringing them all together. And if a big alpha male decides to come along, 
you might even get to see them breeding. The mothers will only reproduce every eight to 10 years. And the reason why the intervals between reproducing are so spaced out is because they want to focus on one baby and that one baby, they raise it until it is about eight years old. They don't want multiple babies at once. Get a bit hectic. But yeah, we're just gonna watch these orangutans eating these bananas and sweet potatoes. And maybe later on in the day, we might even be able to have a really cool one-on-one -on -one experience with one of these beautiful animals. So, Diaz, why are the orangutans going extinct? Uh, going extinct, first of all, because of the habit, their habitat. You know, like one, one alpha male, they need a huge habitat. Our main mission is save the habitat first, actually, and then releasing the orangutan to, to that habitat. Because if we just save the animal, but we don't have enough habitat for them, it's useless because they're gonna fight each other, especially like orangutan. The male have their own territory. If we put a hundred individual orangutan, in 10 hectares area it's gonna be useless because the male each male gonna be fight yeah we don't want yeah. conflicts with conflicts humans with, and with orangutans humans and, around and, and, and by people chopping down their forest yes. th that's what's gonna happen yes so the idea is basically protect more forests protect them there breed forest, the yes. orangutans breed and the get them out there so they have enough land to enough. thrive exactly so our main mission is uh, save the habitat first telling all of the people in, in this area like please save the forest Please save the animals. Please save the orangutans, but there is no money to come to them. It's useless, you know Yeah, it's better to buy their land and protect the land. I think that's the only way that we could do So while cruising up this river, it's easy to forget that this river is home to big saltwater crocodiles. And actually in the late 2000s, there was a police officer who got attacked by a big croc here. He went swimming in the water, a big croc about five meters long grabbed him. And after a few days of the locals searching around this area, they found his body with a big bite mark from the crocodile. And because we're not in Australia, I just keep forgetting that there are big saltwater crocodiles that live here. Later on tonight, we're getting in a couple of the traditional canoes that they use up this river to go looking for snakes deep in the rainforest. So I'm pretty keen for that. But yeah, just enjoying this Arvo, see what else we find. While cruising up the river in the boat, we must have seen hundreds of these proboscis monkeys along the riverbank. They're endemic to Borneo and famous for that huge nose that they have on the front of their face. Against all odds, this big male had 10 females up in the tree with him. Good on you, mate. This is what I wanted coming over here to Borneo to have this one-on-one -on -one connection with an orangutan like this. So these orangutans are incredibly intelligent animals. They've even been seen out in the wild using sticks and rocks as tools to help catch and break open their food. The word orangutan means human of the forest. I truly never thought coming over to Borneo that we would have this kind of experience with an orangutan out here in the wild. So 11 years old, maybe about five or so years ago, he would have just been leaving his mother. They stay with their mother for about five to seven years in the wild. 
which is a long time. The only longer time is humans, which can be up to 40 years. So what will happen is companies will come in and buy the land that the orangutans are living in. They'll chop it down and sell that wood as timber across the world. And then they'll plant the big palm oil plantations. And there's no use in getting these orangutans healthy and back out there into the wild in big numbers if they don't have enough land to survive because the big male orangutans are very territorial animals. They'll get in fights and one of those big males, whoever loses, will get pushed further out into the outskirts. That's when they'll come in contact with villagers, going into the villages, eating their fruit, and on some occasions, the villagers can kill them. It's not uncommon for that to happen over here in Borneo and Sumatra. I would love to come back to Borneo when I'm older and bring my kids back here and have them have this same experience with an animal as beautiful as an orangutan right here. So I'm gonna leave a few links in the description of this video that will help out these orangutans. If you wanna go check them out, do some research or maybe even donate to. Thank you so much to the Indonesian people for being so welcoming every time I come over here and to the Orangutan Foundation International. They're doing some great work, so check out them as well. Thank you so much. Now, I truly believe that people need to see experiences like this with humans and orangutans and to actually come out here and have these experiences myself. This has been an animal I've wanted to find my whole life and seeing them in person makes you want to save them. So I feel like this is pretty cool that I can bring all you along for the adventure and help save and raise awareness for these animals because at the rate that it's going, orangutans could be extinct one day and that is something that we do not want. We want to see these animals thriving out here in the rainforests, not chopping down trees and letting this forest flourish for years to come. Yeah, they, they are very important in this forest because as you know, they are in, in here we call them uh, farmer of the forest, right? So when they are making a nest, like you're explaining about, they are always making nests every day. They're gathering leaves and branches all together to make a good and stable for sleeping. They just suddenly open the canopy of the forest and allows the light to touch the ground to help another plants grow and yeah. get get the nutrition from the sun. Farmers of the forest. Farmer of the forest. So when they're eating their fruit, they're mm -hmm. also dropping the seeds on the floor, which is on allowing... The floor, yeah, allowing the seed for grow. So taking an animal like that out of the whole ecosystem would be detrimental would be. to the jungles of Borneo. Thank you so much to my brothers Diaz and Hari for taking me on this adventure. If you want to do this yourself, make sure to contact them on Instagram. But yeah, three days living in the jungle of orangutans with the people of the forest. See you next week.